Hey friends, thanks for joining me, Jim Baroud, to hear a few insights from leaders who represent our innovation ecosystem. Today's chat is with Ryan Urban, the co-founder and CEO of Wonderkin, formerly BounceX, one of the fastest growing software companies in the country. Hey, I'm Ryan, CEO of Wonderkin, uh, CEO founder of Wonderkin, and uh, this is uh, my giraffe over here, Joffrey, and Jim Mike City creates creates a vibe. So I'm um, 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 right out here from uh, floor 74 and the World Trade Center, um, most beautiful building. It's uh, you get a great view of the city and you're in the city. So it's uh, it's different than like um, Brooklyn, New Jersey. Like you're actually in the city and you, you get to see the city. So and you also uh, the Statue of Liberty, the Brooklyn Bridge. You get the whole thing. It's a it's a nice little 360. You look down at helicopters. It's uh, you got the water. You got the energy. It's 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 a beautiful place. So uh, highly recommend. Uh, you have a company, tell them, to, tell them to come here or go go find a job in this building uh, or maybe a Wonder Kid. Um, we are we're always we're always hiring Wonder Kid. I don't say so. Uh, me, uh, we were I, I did go I did meet uh, Jim at the Ruffman Institute. Uh, I went there because it was uh, one of the I think four or five programs in the country in 1997 when I applied that had major entrepreneurial studies. So I had a I had a pretty successful. Uh, a uh, uh, large scale Beanie Baby business in, in high school. I was the largest secondary market vendor of, of Beanie Babies in, in the world uh, at the time. Uh, and that's where I kind of picked up e-commerce in the 90s. Just so people know what Wonderkind is, talk to us about you know your journey there. Yeah. Um, so Wonderkind, first of all, I'll, I'll talk about like why, why I'm excited uh, about, like I'm, I'm CEO of the company and we're in year nine. And I think as like a, a CEO, like you have to, you have to kind of rehire yourself every six months. Like every six months, you have to say, like, "Hey, um, am I am I going to apply for the job as a CEO of this company?" And so I'll tell you uh, why 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 I really enjoy it. One, I we have the best office in the world, and that was a really special accomplishment. It's like something that's complete. It's the first like first product or service like I, I, I kind of built to completion, which is really cool. So um, it's a uh, you, you have to come see it sometime. It's 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 really special. So uh, you can get you know, a little action here. It looks like Prince's spaceship uh, quite a bit. It's fun. Um, but it's a it's a place for people to do really good work. The um, why why uh, I why why I apply for the job and I got the job luckily. Uh, <laughs> why I like it? There's a I I, I want to be proud of our product services. So I, I really like I I, I love I, I love marketing and um, I love I love great brands and uh, I I love seeing those brands grow. I love seeing those brands produce more more product services and I love consumerism. I like people shopping. I like I like Instagram ads. <laughs> I like ads in magazines. Uh, I, I like I like buying stuff. Uh, I like going play. I, most people like buying stuff, and most people like traveling and going places, experiencing stuff. So experiencing things and buying things are cool. So um, yeah, I want to. I want like, and I think it's fun. So um, like helping helping brands like grow a lot and create more stuff is is meaningful to me. And um, helping brand grow a few percent is kind of cool. Like we're we're in more fifteen percent range. So even like a multi billion dollar brand, we can we grow fifteen percent within a year just just by us. It's awesome. But I want to get to the point where we can we can grow a brand fifty percent uh, to one hundred percent, and that's uh, that that's really special. And the way I like to do it is uh is not by like hey let's send out five emails a day or let's give away discounts uh, let's run sales like that's that's the wrong way to build a brand. Uh, every brand wants to do less of that. Uh, the way to do it is like like. Let, let make it personal, like, like do things that are for people, like make marketing for people, do things that are really, really for people, one-to-one. -one. Um, every store you go into, you, everyone has the same experience, unless it's like a bar. Uh, even like a, you're going to Sephora, probably one of the best retail experiences, it's still like a one-to-all, it's like a fashion blast experience in a store. Every website, including, um, Amazon's mostly a, 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 most of our Amazons actually look quite the same too, uh, surprisingly, uh, on every, if you do a search, I do a search. Regardless of what we purchase, we'll get the same results. Every category page looks the same. Product page looks the same for you. Uh, your homepage will look slightly different, but not much. Uh, your YouTube homepage will look radically different. Your TikTok will look radically different. Your LinkedIn feed looks different. Your Instagram and Facebook look radically different. But yeah, uh, stores, websites, email programs, they are the same for everybody. So, um, and you, if you you make it fun, you make it really about individuals. Um, and and we kind of we just start with email. Let's 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 uh, make email kick ass. And email is like a shopping mall. It's like that's what it's become. Your personal email is. The main use of personal email is, is discovery shopping. That's that's what's for. So let's uh let's kind of let's kind of make this thing killer and fun. So we did. Um, and now we're we're we'll eventually take it to streets and we'll make, we'll make stores one to one. So um, we'll 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 get we'll we'll get there eventually. But so why do I do it? Um, I I want to build that. Um, I I'm a builder. I enjoy that. I enjoy I enjoy seeing the result. Two, um, I like when people work at Wonderkin, like where they worked there for two years or ten years. I want them to look back 
when they're older and look at that as like the best time of their life. Like, wow, that was like really challenging. Like, wow, my district was full there. I work with really smart people. We built some shit. So uh, that is, that's important to me that uh, everyone who worked here, whether it's short or long period of time, it's, uh, this was like very meaningful to them. So I like that. And, and three is like, um, I want to, there's, there's external products and services that we have. Um, there's, there's building meaningful stuff internally. I, I think very rarely do you work at a company where you know what success is your job. You don't know the difference between good, great, and extraordinary is. So everyone having, uh, having that, it's like, okay, you know exactly what good, great, extraordinary is. And say you're at a, a director level. It's like, okay, well, what is the senior director level of, of my job look like? What is the, there's a, a an AVP, a VP, a C-suite. And what are, what, what's the differences there? I don't think people understand that. So uh, make that really clear. Um, have everyone contributing, competing. So everyone has to make their job um, simpler, more powerful, and uh, be part of um, team inter 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 department initiatives that that really drive value. So value is either external value, like for us, uh, we define uh, it's it's people talk about their customers. It's like it like focus on your customers. It you focus on the value drive for customers. It's actually a level deeper. Uh, for us, it's like we, we do solve revenue. It's like dry growth. Like that's something that's true now, true in five years. So we do that. We evaluate drives brand experience, improve operating velocity. Um, we're an enterprise company. So uh, we do uh, reduce risk. Um, that's that's important. Uh, risk and clients uh, for big companies. And you kind of take care of that. You save people time, save people money. Um, so you want to run for margins. So those are some things we do externally. So we, we like to quantify that. And any, anything we do, whether it's a new product service or it's uh, executing on the value of the product service, it has to be attributed to those things. So uh, we we do like the we do like the revenue side of the house that that's a that's cool internally, our product services are more about um, saving people time, improving operating velocity, and and saving the company money. So uh, if you're working on internal products and services, so our, our tools and stuff like that, then you're you're focused on those things. So uh, it's important that every single company, uh, every single person knows what good great story is in their day to day job. And on top of that, they are working on individual and and group initiatives task force where they're they're working on bigger bigger macro macro initiatives that either have internal or external values. That we have, and you you ship value. Everyone here is ship value. If you don't ship value, it's up or out. Like even if you do your regular job great, you ship value, and a big part of your job is how you influence the sphere of people around you. So it's uh, that's not like oh, and your job is this. You're actually creating motivation. Whether it's when it's like hey, there's there's a challenge, problem, you you gotta you gotta solve it. Like well, then you want to create motivation to go do it, right? And or if something's an opportunity, something's going great, you want to make it go better. You have a new thing, cool. Your your job is to motivate people around you. Doesn't matter if you're a leader or not. Like you motivate. You motivate people around you, so that's that's the number one way your your performance will be evaluated. How you motivate the people around you, or do you motivate people around you? You you have every, it's, it's not even people who are like a holes. There's some people just like take the air out of the room, right? That that's uh, and on, on paper they're 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 doing great. They're they're actually such negative value. Like I'll ship them to all my I'd say it on cutters like <laughs> any bad company. Cool, take these people who like look great on paper. Um, so that's number one. Um, the really good people can motivate up. Like, hey, they can really see like how they can make their make their their leader progress and come progress, and and the great people can motivate down. And I think well, let me yeah. stop you there, Ryan. You, there's yeah. a lot you've just spoke about, and it's amazing. That place is amazing, by the way. I was there for one of your you know uh, celebrations, and it is an amazing facility. Yeah, uh, it's gorgeous. But you speak about uh, leadership, right? Tell us how you know what one or two things you've learned you know in the past nine years. How yeah. you've become a better leader? Yeah. Uh, the best leaders build build leadership machines. So I'm, I'm just making this up right now. So the best leaders um, in, in power, there's like delegating and empowering. Um, delegating is like something that that you may not want to do. Empowering is something that you might be great at and enjoy doing, and you empower someone else to do that. So and empowering, like the reason like you want to empower the people, so not so you fire yourself so you can do bigger shit. So like I, I everything I do right now, I want to empower other people to do it so I can do bigger shit. So that's, that's why I do it. The best leaders build machines. The, the machine they build is like, they make sure they have the next leaders down and they're empowering them. And how they empower them is they're teaching them how to build the leaders. They're teaching the leaders down how to build leadership machines. So the best leaders build machines that push buttons and build other leaders. So that, that's how a system works. And, um, and a, a great companies don't even need like have purpose, mission, passion. If you if you if you work with smart people and and everyone's like like executing like it could be great you and if then if you have like purpose it's uh, it's even better so the third thing I was gonna mention uh, so one is like um, why why I'm CEO of this company uh, one is for the ecosystem like I I, I want to help the best brands grow 50% plus um, I do 
and so they could pay more great product sources. So I wanted to um, make their marketing fun and enjoyable uh, for their, their their customers, future customers, and have them make more cool shit. So whatever whatever those product services are. So uh, I, I like that. Two is um, having the right having people really be looking back and uh, and and while they're in, really enjoy their time and, and know what that success means. Uh, and then three, if you do that, then then you can do some like you can you have your internal products and services like that or how you for your your team members that can be something that sets a tone for other companies so then other companies can that would be if, if that works here then other companies would want to do that like our, our employees wouldn't go to other companies unless they had they had that in place so uh, then you could set the tone for other companies um, and also i think um uh i, I think the eventually the the four-day work week is going to be a standard uh, we will uh we'll probably be one of the first companies that um, that adopt that uh we're instead of a uh, Tech companies usually do 10 to six, but we're gonna kind of switch the hours. Um, instead of uh, 10 to six or nine to five, Monday, Friday, we're gonna do nine to six, Monday, Thursday, um, nine to one on Friday. And then um, for off peak times, when uh, we earn it, we have some like big top level KPIs, some that's uh, the value of products drive. So there, there's metrics on that. There's there's our customer success metrics and uh, there's our performance acceleration for internal people. When we hit certain metrics on those for two quarters in a row, then We'll earn the right to drop that Friday off for off peak time. So that about half the year, we'll, we'll drop that Friday off. But that's something we earn. So if, if the company performs well, we we drop it off. So I, I think that's that's going to be uh, that's become that's going to be very common. And it's if you're at a company with a four day work week, you're not going to go to one and five. Um, and a lot of people don't want to come to that. Um, and you can you can be way more effective uh, that extra hour a day, Monday Thursday, way more effective than that the Friday afternoon. So no one wants to work that. And then Friday's really and the Fridays you do are working. It's more, it's more for like wins and lighter stuff. So. Well, uh, that, that's the third thing I, that, that's important to me. Well, let's talk about that for a second, Ryan, because everyone's talking about remote work, hybrid that's work. Bullshit. What's that's, your feeling on that? It's not my feeling. It's everyone's feeling. It's bullshit. Um, he, um, we're humans. So humans, hum, humans work with humans. So it's a, I do think like requiring people to come to the office every day, Monday, Friday was, that, that was nonsense too. Uh, we always had super flexible work from home policy. Uh, we are, we'll, we'll probably um, go at some point to, uh, uh, you can work from home Friday and one other day. Uh, and I want you to be in the office. Uh, we, we have jobs available remote, but like, that's like, Hey, I, I compensate you for your time, your commute, your contributions. It's a, uh, it, imagine being a leader of a team and you don't, you don't even know what people look like from profile view, right? So, so you haven't, you haven't, you haven't had lunch with person. So, uh, you don't, um, Zoom's very transactional. It's very tough to get to know a person personally, unless it's like a one-on-one thing where you can have like a group four person conversation and like, there's way more joking around and stuff um, in person and in between meetings and little drive by stuff and it's uh, that stuff's super important. So, um, and and it's uh, I'm I'm happy it's going to be way more flexible. It's not hybrid; it's just work, right? So, so if you look at a um, if you look at Zoom, uh, Zoom goes to the office. Slack, um, those two companies that remote work before the pandemic, they came to the office every day. So, Zoom comes to the office every day. So, what does that tell you? Uh, <laughs> it's it's people, <laughs> it's human. So, um. um and I'm I'm a big believer of like having, uh, I'll probably have an office in um, in every every city in the United States at some point because there's some getting access to different talent and different kind of people. That's like that's like true diversity too. So that's a uh, yeah. It's it's nice having like some people. I'm I'm opening up a big office in Indianapolis now, so it's like it's cool having some people in the Midwest and like not everyone's just like like <laughs> just New York City. And we are such a New York City company, but it's 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 nice having some different people. I will not open office in California. No. Well, as you, as you talk, it, it seems like you have an amazing culture there, right? You can't do that over Zoom, right? You want them there to really, you know, be immersed in it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you like, yeah, like, look, look I'm wearing like, I'm wearing some like crazy outfit. You can't miss it. <laughs> uh, look, you you may not know. I have like, yeah, like, like full, full like, like, yeah. yeah all right. Yeah. So we're, I got, I got, I got pizzas on my nails. You don't see those. <laughs> Before we pivot to the future, mm -hmm. we just went through a challenging year with this pandemic. What every year is a challenging year. I know, but the pandemic was clearly once in a century. So, what did you, you know, how did so. how did you lead the business through this difficult time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, that, that, there, there was certainly that. I, I assume there will be way more challenging things than that in the future. Uh, you expect that. Like that's like we have a we have five core values. One of them is bounce back. Like expect that. Like that's the cost of doing business. You're in business. Like you're doing business. I expect. Don't expect things to be a straight line. That's just not how it works. So um, it's, um, 
it's expect the pressure to expect those things and and be be calm forward. It's like forward is the only answer. If you're you're gonna fight with your spouse, forward. That's it. Don't talk about the past. <laughs> it's forward. Move forward. Move forward with a good attitude. Everyone has a choice to have a good attitude. So everyone can bring good energy to things. Uh, move forward. And what we did is we took care of our clients. We weren't like there's some larger companies um, that were not nice to their clients, uh, and they their market caps did did better. They but they're not, and their employees know that they're not good people. So most big companies uh, were not good to their, their clients. They enforced contracts. We didn't do that. I don't care what your contract was. We created a menu of options. Like, hey, we, you want us to pause billing. You want us to reduce price. You want us to uh, give you new product service. You want us to like uh, be flexible on the payment terms. We're not doing all those things. Uh, so do that in exchange. Like, let's, uh, let's give us a little bit. We'll be partners with you, partners with us. So maybe we'll, we'll work together for another year and we'll, we'll work on this stuff. And uh, hey, we'll, we'll be more active. We'll give you better service and better support during, during that time. And uh, we put out the best content industry on how to recover and what people were doing and daily stats and what was happening. So uh, we, we provide a lot of value to the ecosystem. So uh, that's what we did. And uh, yeah, it, and then we, we recovered in like a quarter. Uh, and like every company like probably instantly made some cuts and we did that too. And we, we, we try to offer as, I think we were half the people jobs back within six months. So. And now we're, now we're way bigger than, than we were then. Um, but we took care of our customers. So we, we took care of our clients and that's, uh, and we took care of our, our people too. So. That, that, that's, that's great to hear. Okay. Now, speaking of the pandemic, there was a question about, you know, what about New York City, right? We've heard James Altucher speak about uh, New York is dead or-, or so why, 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 would anyone, why would anyone quote an idiot? Like, why would anyone quote an idiot? <laughs> I'm just, why I'm, we the messenger. Messenger. I'm the messenger. Well, then uh, don't, don't, why are you talking about an idiot? Like- <laughs> Okay, well, tell us your view on, on, on how- Not a view, New York, New York City has its own personality. New York, New York City is- New York City is a living, breathing thing, always. So um, I think this summer is probably going to be the best summer in New York City history. You're, uh, if you walk on like Broadway and Grand, where before there was like a few places kind of open outside, now it's like the whole block is vibrant. It's it's true New York. Like that that restaurants are going to have more capacity than ever before this summer. And they're being really creative. Like Europe had the cool like cafes in the street, but Europe has trash food. Um, now New York has the best food in the world and now it's outside and like, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, and now, now like, honestly, the rent was too damn high. Uh, that's for retail. That's for businesses. So now I get to expand a lot in New York city. So my rent, I'm going to say 30% of my rent here. Um, and, uh, retail, it's like, they're getting, they can do like more, way more flexible leases, like three leases, better deals. So you're going to see all these restaurant tours in the city open up way more stuff this summer. And you can see a lot of restaurant tours from like London, Seattle, other places in the country open up New York City and before. And you can see a lot of new people come to New York City because it's cheap. Uh, it's, they're gonna, you're going to see a new influx like every every time. And that's happening now. So um, it's, yeah, the, the curve, it's, uh, it's New York's, you can see now and next summer is going to be most up opening in New York City history. It's going to be very vibrant. So. That, that, is. that is comforting and exciting to hear. Now, yeah. talk about the, you mentioned about the expansion of, of Wonderkind. Uh, so just yeah. give us the perspective, uh, how you see the company growing in the next, just say. Yeah. Uh, I went, when I look at growth, I, I, look at, I look at it as valuable product services. I look at going from like really drive business 15% to 50% uh, and keep improving brand experience. So I, I look at that. And then some of the outputs that way, we'll probably be 600 people in this year. Uh, we'll, we'd, we'd love to be a, a public company next year and ticker symbol WKND weekends, weekend on weekdays. So We'll do that. It's it's. I think it's an amazing opportunity to be a public company. That's it's really great for the people who help build build the place to get get rewarded for it. Uh, it's also a great way to attract talent, attract clients, um, buy companies. We 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 went on the offense during last year, and we were able to uh, pick up a great company and pick up a, a lot of great people and leaders. It's really hard to find good leaders, and uh, you can buy them. Sometimes it's like, oh, go shopping. Why don't you buy, go shopping for some leaders today? So uh, and we did, and that was great. So. Um, yeah, so we're we're gonna do more to say, but it's it's about it's about shipping beautiful products and services. That's like that. That's what that's why you do a company. You, you, it's not about employee count logos, though. Um, uh, best brand in the world to be signed. Uh, so we're the tech partner of Record School. I can't mention it, but the uh, uh, it's, it's a good one. So, <laughs> okay, that's between yeah. you and me. Yeah, so, uh, but just to remind folks, it's behavioral marketing software as a service. Correct. Uh, it, 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 it's it's software. It's it's software and certain services. Um, uh, you can go behavior marketing. That's uh, it's it's we uh, we 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 sell value. We sell growth. So we we really we we do one to one market. We we're, we enterprise one to one marketing. So we take everything you do. We make a one to one. We're the only company that's scaled one to one. Every single brand in the world 
wants to have an actual relation to the customers and no one does. Nike doesn't have a relation to the customers, 91% of the customers. And every brand gives a, a one-to-all experience. So they all have some form of personalization one-to-one. We're the only company that's attempted to scale besides like TikTok. Like the TikTok, cool, they did a good job. Fa- Facebook invented it basically. Um, and like Twitter's like, oh shit, there's, there's news feed. We should do this thing, right? Uh, so <laughs> yeah, so, so we, we do that. We do that for marketing. Um, so we, we scale one-to-one. I, I, I would just look at it like that. Great, great. So there's a lot of entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, uh, on, on the line here. So tell us, you know, share just one thing, you know, as far as advice for entrepreneurs. Ship value, I told you. Ship value. So like, figure out the value of your products and services and ship that. And and whoever your customers are, like keep making more stuff for those customers. Everyone forgets like they, they do one product or service, like come up with more stuff, more value, make what you do better. Focus on the value product and service always, and then do more stuff that provides more value. It's like for us, the revenue was a big focus, but now we, and now we also focus on same field money, same field time, all these other things too, and, and measure that. And like you step on a scale, cool. Like create your scale for the value you drive. And not what you think the value is. Like it, it has to be pretty undeniable. It has to be undeniable performance, undeniable value. So I'll do that. Uh, and if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, it's, um, uh, uh, one, make sure you, you invest a lot of money in public markets and get a few hundred thousand dollars invested, not saved. Uh, so uh, I think everyone could get a million dollars invested in seven years if they put X amount of money in and they, they put in the right, the right public stocks. So it's uh, every, everyone could be a millionaire. And I was talking to Jim before, it's like you could become, you could generate wealth two ways and it's an end, not an or. It's one, you could create shit. You, one is create and two is you invest in creators. So you create or invest in creators. That's how you, that's how you get wealth. One of the so uh, uh, do that. Uh, and if you're, if you're aspiring, um, like get up a website, get a logo, put up a website, and then have a ship date for when, when you want to have your first customer or customer's buy. Uh, your first paying customer. Say, have a drop that date. Hold yourself accountable. Uh, tell a lot of people, say it publicly. State it publicly. A lot of places that you're going to have this done by this date. And then have meetings with people. Hold yourself accountable. Uh, uh, so... As I recommend it. And whatever ship date is, just okay, try to, if your ship date's two months in the future, try to do it in a week. So create, create, see, what a CEO could do is create deadlines. So create one for yourself. Yeah. Well, as you know, things have changed so much since you started your first e commerce site, right? So what, yeah. just yeah. let's unpack that for a second. There's so many options now. It's so much, there's so many turnkey options, right? Yeah. If there was a young, you know, a teenager or a college student who wants to start a business, what would be the best platform? Uh, to is there, or is there no platform? What, what would you recommend? The, the best platform is coming up with a good product and service that provides value. That 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 is what matters. It's not the technology. With us, like we have, we have, uh, of course, you can use Shopify, whatever, Squarespace. Yeah, those are great, cool, easy. You get you stand up really quickly, and if you got the right agency, you can scale Instagram ads. Like with Shopify and Instagram ads, you can if you have really good products and you have a brand. Like focus on your brand, what your brand represents. What do you want your brand to do? When people wear your stuff, drink your stuff spray your stuff, whatever it is. What, how do you want them to feel? Like, what kind of vibe do you want your brand to have and make that, what's the story of your brand? So define that and stick to that. And then make great products and services. And um, yeah, then you could stand up and shop by, use some email software and then and, and go at it. But it's, it's the more important thing is the brand product. Figure out like, how are you gonna ship great product and the product really high quality, highest quality product services. If you're not making the best product, then don't bother. Make the best thing. So there's never no one, no great brand has any competition. It's they, they make great products. Like Reebok's not a competitor. Nike, it's just not. Like, it's not. Well, so. let's just tease it out for a second, Ryan. You've seen so many products. What's the one opportunity that you wish you grabbed onto, or you wish you invested in? W- working when I was six. I told you. It should have been <laughs> working when I was six. They should have put me to work. Like I was built to work. But you've uh-huh. seen so much new technologies coming out with the past five, 10 years. What was the one thing you said, I wish we would have done that or I would have invested in? Um, not, not me. I, 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 I've done well in the public, public stuff. I haven't, I haven't missed one company there uh, uh, privately. Like I, I didn't have enough money to invest in private companies back then. So, uh, and now I just invest in creators. Like, and I root for them to succeed and I encourage them to think really big, like, like literally think big. Like, so. Uh, it sounds like uh, something on a wall, but you, you have to actually have, have a real vision for yourself. Most people don't have a vision for themselves. I'd say 99% of people don't have a vision for themselves, even entrepreneurs. So you got to 
why are you doing what one of the reasons why I'm doing what I do? I'm 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 operating. I'm I'm every day when I come to Wonderkin, I'm doing stuff for the future. So I'm doing stuff for myself five years in the future. So the stuff I did five years ago that allowed, that allows me this year I can open up my, my ETF, uh, Daddy's Money, ticker symbol Poppy, coming later this year. We'll be getting minimum 50% return, probably 100. Uh, and uh, and I can open venue. And now I can, and then the stuff I'm doing now, I can do much bigger things in five years. And I'll still, and of course I'll be doing one again. So um, yeah, you can, like that whole focus on one thing, that's bullshit. So <laughs> <laughs> you just you do it in a different context. I don't context switch. So if I'm right. doing one I do one stuff. Um, I might do my my uh, best stuff in the morning and I'll have like a Friday afternoon or a Thursday morning. I'll allocate, I don't time switch at all. Multitasking is bullshit too. So. I, I focus on one thing at a time. I don't, I don't context switch ever. We have some questions here. Before I get to them, uh, Ryan, can you talk to us about the name change? How you came up with Wonderkind? It was an uprint. Um, and you don't come with the name. Uh, the, your company has names. You got to like, like, like an Adam might have a name. You got to like talk to it. You got to articulate its name. So a, a company has a name too. So um, we just had to like get it out. Um, turned out the name was Wonderkind. So Wonderkind is is an indiv any individual can accomplish extraordinary things. And Wonderkin is, is, is someone just, uh, just, just doing amazing things. One, one person can make a whole company go and it's, that's all it takes. Uh, it doesn't matter any level. So, um, it's, uh, it's, it's trying to do extraordinary. It's about, about individuals being individuals and then doing extraordinary things. So, uh, and great thing on Wonderkin, Wonderkind, every way you pronounce it is correct. So every, everywhere in Europe and different areas of Germany, they pronounce it differently. It's cool. Uh, some, so sometimes different times of day, I could say differently. Sometimes it's Wunderkind or Wunderkind or Wunderkind. So yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's great. And it, it's us. It's, uh, it's an, it represents us. So it was an upper end. Um, wasn't a name change. Like our bounce sex was a, a great chapter. Now it's a new book. It's like, that was a cool book. We had a lot of seasons. It was a, it was a great show. It's a uh, still there. It's, uh, but now it's a, now I got a, you got a new show. The book's big. So we got a new, new book and this is us. This represents us who we are as people. So, okay. Sounds good. I, like I love the, I love the name actually. So um, question about your leadership skills, right? How did you learn them? Yeah. Um, observe. You learn success from success. You don't, like you don't, you don't get good at, at, you don't get good at chess by playing against kindergartners. Um, you find other great leaders. You can learn on your own. Of course, you're going to learn a lot of stuff on your own, uh, but you look at other people who are extraordinarily successful and, I don't, I don't watch TV, movies, news, um, social media. I spend, well, YouTube has the best free content on the planet. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege that we have access to seeing iconic people who are building, who are builders and innovators and creators speak, whether it's conversations and doing podcasts. Um, you, you have access to the best creators in the world and the best minds in the world. So like you can read books. I think reading books are bullshit. Like just watch creators talk. And uh, you can watch on 2x too. So you can watch twice as much or half the time, your choice. Uh, I wish YouTube did 3x. If you try to watch me on YouTube on 2x, you will not understand fucking words. <laughs> uh, I'm the only person, I can't understand myself on 2x. I can understand everyone else, but not me. So, uh, but I, I, rec I recommend spending your time on weekends or weeknights when you have time for you, like doing that. Um, just being engulfed in great leaders. So uh, I think a CEO's job is really two things. Uh, one, like you have that leadership machine where you're developing other leaders, develop other leaders, develop other leaders. Like that's, that's well one. And you're, you're motivating your, your top people. You spend all your time giving me the least your top people. You spend all your time with them and you motivate them to do big things and have operating velocity. Speed is important. So make your company fast. Uh, operating velocity should lead to innovation velocity. Innovation velocity is everything. So when I invest in companies or when I look at my company or any, any kind of investing, I, I want to have three characteristics. Uh, so one, it's it's a beautiful products and services and the best, like beautiful products and services, two, high innovation velocity. So they're improving their products rapidly and they're developing new ones and maybe even buying ones. Uh, innovation velocity is super important. That's that's gonna be where they're there in the future. Uh, they're the best now and they'll be the best in the future. Uh, that's why like, Amazon's so dominant. Like, uh, like they're, 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 dom they're gonna be dominant forever. They just, they just will be. Um, and uh, the third thing is um, early stage growth cycle. So if I'm investing someone, I, I don't want to be a, like, like Microsoft is they're great. They're not the early stage growth cycle. Tesla is. So sometimes early stage growth cycle might be a, a $600 billion market company or a billion dollar market company. Yeah, you, you have a few billion dollar market company. So early stage growth, high innovation velocity, build product services. So that's, um, uh, so back to a CEO's job. CEO's job is to create that innovation velocity. Innovation velocity is you focus on the value of product and services 
and you build up, you teach all the leaders to build all the leaders and you create a vibe, you motivate all people. So that's, that's, that's what CEOs and leaders should do. And that's, you, you learn that from the best leaders. The best leaders will tell you like, that's what you do. There's a question, a detailed question about soft launch, right? So you talked about dry value, right? Yeah. But is there anything, you know, about the focus of an entrepreneur as they lead up to a soft launch of a product, of a new product? Obviously get the customer we're, first. We're, we're, well, you're so much of product, you figure out to figure out who your customers are. So um, uh, like at the beginning of being at Wonderkin, I was like, okay, are my customers are gonna be publishers, large e-commerce companies, small e-commerce companies, other vendors, other tech companies. So um, like try your product out with different customer archetypes and see where it's providing the most value and it's the, it, where it's having the most impact and it's easiest to, to move forward quickly. And then just, just, just do that for a little bit. Like, Focus on one kind of customer set and nail that before you move on to other customer sets. You don't want to go, oh, this is for everybody. Like, focus on making it great for, see, see, see where your product or service has the most impact or value to a customer set. That's the that's point, point of a soft launch is figuring out that. Uh, understanding, particularly the value of your product and who it's providing most value for, and then nailing that and continuously making your product service better that provides more value for that customer group. And then you eventually expand other customer groups. Got it. Okay. But I would nail a customer group. I would just be the best at nailing it for a particular group of customers. Got it. What about technical knowledge, right? Not everyone is a, a software mm -hmm. wizard or a developer. Mm -hmm. How much technical knowledge did you have before you went into business? You don't need you, you, you don't, you, don't you, you, you need to be a leader. Like that's, you'd be a leader. Uh, you don't need technical knowledge. So there's, there's a, a million, like people are coding in, in elementary school now, literally like, they're, they're, you could probably get a good enough developer or someone in middle school, high school to build build a prototype or build something what you need to do. It's not not that hard. Um, there's developers everywhere, so go go make friends with a few developers. That's and and then get them bought into what you're doing. So uh, and then uh, first pay first don't don't bring on partners right away. Like first be a founder. Don't bring on partners. Eventually you can bring on other partners, but you control you control your company. Like do that, and then you can bring on co-founders after. Be a founder. So. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend that if, if you're the per if, if you're if, if you're you're lazy as hell then be a co-founder <laughs> then then partner with someone else but they're going to be mad at you in a few years and fire you uh but then maybe you want to latch on to someone else really good but don't make yourself an equal partner if you're lazy as hell like if, if you're if you're like you're an ideas person you're strategic cool if you don't want to actually put in the work like motor actually output like that's really important so um anyone who's an executor who's going to kill a non-executor at some point doesn't matter how with the vision they're just going to choke them out Gonna yeah, no, that's a, that's 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 very true. So, Ryan, what about um, at least understanding? You know, they don't have to be a developer or a coder, but they should have some working knowledge. Or should do they need to have some working knowledge of of sort of tech in general, or or does it not matter as much anymore? Um, do should I go do a four year degree in accounting, or should I hire accountants at my company? Like, so do I, well, I'm not going to code school. Like, no, it's like, should I be an expert at Excel? No, you, you have people who are good at that. So enjoy that. You do that. Um, you should have knowledge of, of being a leader. That's not knowledge of leading, developing, hiring great people. And you, you hire, you hire someone who's great for technical, you hire someone who's great technically, and um, you inspire them to inspire other people. So. I got it. Okay. So another yeah. question is about, obviously you have strong opinions uh, and, and really, uh, I, just, I have right I, opinions. I, and, and someone says that <laughs> Energy, I love your energy too. Uh -huh. But what do you do to foster flexibility? You know, uh, to change your mind about thoughts and ideas in the face of new. Every, every everything I think is subject to change with more information. Everything everything starts to evolve, not change. My opinion will always evolve as I get more inputs. So just get more inputs, and your opinion always evolves. And I, I like to be right. So if you want to be right, get get more get more inputs and and evolve evolve your thoughts. Uh, I, I everyone thinks they're hyper objective. They're not. Um, I am, uh, and a lot of times my my things on things like no one else in the world has this opinion, and I'm like, oh, you guys will figure it out like a few hundred years ago. And what do you you you've invest a lot in other companies? How yeah, I've invested in creators. In creators, okay. Yeah. It, or people create. Yep. There's a lot of talk about the stock market just going up and up and up. How do you do you do you watch that at all? Does that affect yeah. you in any way? Um, who cares about the stock market? Are you and I think investing in index funds is so lazy. Like, who cares what the market does? There's if the market is down 50% one year, there's plenty of companies that have gone up 100% that year, just invest in those companies. And instead of investing in those companies, you uh, find, find companies that have beautiful products and services, high innovation velocity and early stage growth. And then instead of forget, throw your money in 10 of those companies, like spread up between five and 10 companies, don't think about it. So like, you're pretty, you're obviously a company like Tesla is great, but you throw your money in a company like, like Etsy, like 
it's gonna it's gonna go forever. People love love Shabbat Netzi. It's gonna it's a super high innovation philosophy. It's growing. Um, uh, Wayfair, Neo, uh, Moderna is probably the best company you can invest in right now. Um, they're going to really, literally change the world. Like, like go invest in that company. Uh, that will that will be a five trillion dollar market company. Like literally, like no joke. Like that will that will eventually do trillions. Um, it's a uh, no. People don't understand what a, what a beautiful company this is. So go invest. Go invest in great companies like that. Uh, there's so many great tech companies like like Pounty, CrowdStrike, Twilio, uh, Square. Like there's awesome companies that you don't even think about. They're just boom. You know they're like. I don't say to the moon because moon is a moon is a bullshit rock, but um, like there's there's actually cool moons on Saturn, our moon and shit, but like yeah, <laughs> to Saturn. So uh, yeah, just pocket money and some really great iconic companies. There's so many good ones out there now. So just do that. Um, don't put everything in cash. That's cash, cash dead. Uh, and and actually, um, um, uh, I was uh, I was on I was Bitcoin. Then I was out. I'm like, oh, quantum computer is gonna crack it and it's too slow. And then I'm like, oh, I'm in again. So um, um, yeah, you put five percent or ten percent of your stuff in Bitcoin. It's 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 going to probably go up generally. So um, and it, it is it is replacing the gold standard. And it is it's going to they'll they'll have ways that you will be transactional. It pay it'll be on every website uh, with with PayPal. Um, it's you'll be able to kind of pay in and out. Um, we'll we'll we're going to accept Bitcoin soon too. This company. And, and NFTs. What do you think of NFTs? It's a great idea. It's a great idea. To, well, I love it. It's from the artist perspective. Like an artist can like. You see the record of people on it, but like the artist can get like ten percent every time something sells, they get ten percent. It's like that's cool. Uh, I like the concept. Uh, a basketball video, like I think sports cards are that's that's in, sports cards are insanity. A, a video of basketball things insanity, but like you can make some great like Dorsey selling his first tweet. That's kind of cool. Cool. You own you own the first tweet. Nice. It's uh, that's art. So art doesn't need to be a painting on a wall. Art art can be in any form. So uh, yeah, I like that's that's people creating more shit. So it's cool. I like it. What about your favorite YouTube creators? Um, uh, you, YouTube, uh, YouTube is great for like, for sports. Um, you have people creating some really good content because the content you'll see in like a newspaper ESPN is like very blah. Like you see people going to details, like, like, uh, there's some really good, like New York Mets and Giants content. Like it's awesome. Uh, and these are people like, with like 2000 subscribers, uh, Warren Redlick does the best information about, uh, Tesla, Neuralink, Elon Musk. He's, uh, he's awesome. Uh, he, he's, he's great. Um. Uh, and you just get objective information and everything. It's uh, just YouTube phenomenal. Generally, like YouTube, I, I like uh, 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 Joe Rogan, definitely the best conversationalist. Uh, some really iconic kind of guests there. I, I love the long form there. Uh, but it's, it's really about the guests and the people. Like, I, I'll, I'll go down rabbit holes of like, whether it's like David Sinclair, Elon Musk, like, uh, yeah, it's Neil deGrasse Tyson, whoever it might be. Uh, I love Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett. Like, go watch Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger's 90 something. He's like, <clears throat> speaks faster than me. So, so uh, yeah, go watch that guy. He's smart as hell. So there's some smart ass people. Just go find them and watch them. So, well, speaking of creators, someone yeah. mentions that they you remind them of Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk. Do you yeah. know? They yeah. ask. Do you know yeah. him? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you look at? Is he a role model or mentor or what? Or? Uh, I I think uh, uh, he's a he's a great person. In New York. He's doing cool things. He he's uh, like he, he kind of put his life out there and like. Um, he, he likes to motivate like the next generation, like the, like the, the young, the younger folk. Like for me, I'm more of, a, um, and, I, and that's great. And his business is doing great. He has a lot of stuff. He's a great performer. He's a great sports agency right now. So he's doing a lot of things. So I, I like that. Uh, I, uh, like for me, like, instead of like motivating a whole group of people, like I'd rather like be one-on-one with someone who's like a real good creator. And, uh, it's like, Hey, like, Get them to like think bigger and go go bigger and do shit now. So like those the pe people built can build more shit. The biggest opportunity is the the people who are doing the best is the best opportunity. So if you have like two people and one's like doing great, one person's not like the, the great the great person can do greater shit. So like that's a uh, like. Are that, there any YouTubers like, you want to call? Any of the creators that you're working with you want to call out or name at this point? Uh, I I mean just go at any any. We're 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 in witness of a living legend, Elon Musk. So like, watch everything he's ever said. Like, if you haven't watched every word of that, the most important person in history so far is live. You have you have someone with the brain of Einstein, the execution of Thomas Edison. So, um, and he thinks much bigger than those people. Um, it's it's a uh, remarkable what that guy's doing. So, it's uh, yeah, you should everything that he's ever said. You should you should watch that stuff. But go back and watch some Albert Einstein stuff too. Um, yeah, there's there's some there's some there's some cool stuff happening. So. Um, um, also, I would, I would also pay attention to what, what David Sinclair is doing. Uh, I think uh, 
he's, he's the only person working on immortality. And I, I think there's a shot at cracking that in the next 50 years. I know one's talking about that. Uh, humans might, humans for certain will live forever in 200 years. Uh, it's, it's very possible next 50 years. So it's, uh, I, I, I go follow that and see how it could be a part of it. Got it. There's one last question. We're going to uh, wrap this up. Do you, they want to know what company, I don't know if you want to say this. They want to know what companies that you're involved with or backing and what problems are they trying to solve? Um, it's a bit big misnomer that people think co companies solve problems. They don't, it's like, cool. You, then when the company solves a problem, then what? You just go home. Like com companies, uh, companies build stuff. They, they, like Google didn't solve a problem was like, how many, did the world need another search engine? No, they, they made, made great search engines. Well, it's like, oh, we need another search engine. Like, no, it's like, they, they made something better. Like um, go maximize an opportunity. Maximize an, maximize an opportunity like is much better than solving problems. So don't solve a problem, stop solving problems. So uh, yeah, so uh, what companies do, uh, do, do I really like? Oh, a lot of companies I mentioned. So um, it's, uh, and I, I do a lot of pub company investing. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Uh, Neo at, at Moderna is an amazing one. Neo out of Asia is doing incredible things. Tesla. Um, there's a, a Grogen is a is a really good company. Um, Square, amazing company. Etsy, phenomenal company. Wayfair, phenomenal company. Um, HubSpot's a great company. Twilio, and these are just great leaders for these too. So it's uh, all these companies: CrowdStrike, Palantir, Snowflake, uh, Zoom, Killer. So. Um, yeah, you have, you have just these iconic, iconic companies. Um, it's 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 amazing that you can kind of be a part of these things. Uh, privately, like yeah, let them. There's gonna be a lot of companies that get out there and do some good things too, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'll I'll be one of them. So I do invest in a whole bunch of uh, small companies um, at earlier stages too. So I kind of uh, was, was investing in Canva. I thought that they're doing some great things, great tools. Um, Row, Row.co, Roman. Um, they're 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 doing some awesome stuff too. Um, and and having like doctors on video and being able that that's awesome. It's a great experience. So um, yeah, there's a I'm I'm an investor in something called Lit. It's a making instead of reading books, you watch books. So you can right now you can you can listen to a book, you can read a book. This enables you to watch a book. It takes a takes in would be a six hour audio book into about an hour and a half. Um, but it's a uh, it's watchable. So you get to the author, you got a feel for it. It's a lot more context. It's, it's, it's shorter form in one way, but it's more context in other ways. So uh, check that out, uh, Lit Books. It's, uh... Ryan, it was great to have you. Much success going forward. I look yep. forward to seeing you at your office one of these days. Have a great... I will. And uh, everyone, uh, you, if you know someone is really, really talented, wants to be challenged, this is a place to be challenged. So um, have them check out Wonderkin. And if you're Wonderkin, check out Wonderkin. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like it, leave a review, and subscribe. See you soon.